I'm going to speak to you now about the Big Bang model or the Big Bang Theory. Um, now, this is not just a TV show, which, by the way, I think is really funny. But uh, no, I don't mean the TV show. I mean the actual Big Bang model. Now, this is sort of one of the main things behind cosmology. And so we're going to talk about this so-called Big Bang model. So this is sort of something about an inflationary universe. This is really what it's sort of helping us to understand here. So what we're going to do then is uh, maybe talk about a few of the main things with it, a few of the features. So this Big Bang model, the Big Bang theory, says basically that at some time, and we'll just write this down, I think it's important, um, you know, all the stuff that we needed to make the universe, so all the mass that is in the universe, you know, everything basically, uh, was located Um, we could say in an infinitely small, maybe we can say, um, singularity. So an infinitely small singularity. Singularity means sort of a place that you know, sort of weird stuff happens. So an infinitely small singularity. And then what happened then? So then, for some reason, it exploded. Now, when it exploded, of course, that means things are sort of very hot. That's the key thing here from this one here. So it exploded, which made things very hot. And what happened after that, of course? Um, well, after an explosion, things tend to cool. So we'll say it then cooled. Um, it made the hydrogen that we need. So made H, it then of course made the stars, which eventually made us. And the key thing is that the universe is expanding. So we could say it's a non, uh, how can we say this? Well, we could say it's a non-infinite expanding universe. So the universe is non-infinite and is expanding. So this, this explains very well, first of all, how we think all the things that made us sort of came to be. And that's because, well, at some point, of course, it uh, had to explode. Then everything sort of got shot out. And it ended up being uh, certain conditions to where then particles could actually be made. And those eventually made hydrogen. And those then eventually were able to combine and sort of collapse um, into something that's hot enough and dense enough to fuse from hydrogen to helium, so that made the next element, and so on and so on, until iron. And it turns out after iron, uh, then you can have things like stars blowing up uh, in a supernova, and that ends up making um, things that are heavier than iron. And we're going to do some videos about those later on. We call this nucleosynthesis, this whole concept here. But the main thing behind it is this, that at some point, uh, all the mass in the universe is located in an infinitely small singularity. It exploded, and the key thing is that it's non-infinite and it's expanding. Okay, so in other words, non-infinite in size now. I mean, yes, it was infinitely small at some time, but uh, now it's non-infinitely small. In fact, it's got some sort of size, and it's expanding. Now, you don't have to necessarily like a theory in order to accept it. I personally find this one really weird because, of course, it brings up a lot of other questions. And clearly, in science, we don't have all the answers. But this is the best model that we have to explain things. Now, it does bring up some really weird things. First of all, why was all this stuff in an infinitely small singularity? And the question might also be, why did it explode? And then when we talk about this, I mean, if we say it's expanding, another question could be, expanding into what? I mean, is there some sort of outside of the universe? Well, by definition, if you're in the universe and you take a step forward, you know, at the edge of the universe, the fact that you've stepped forward means you've made the universe that one step bigger. In other words, it's hard to understand what we're expanding into. We also might say, well, what's the shape of the universe? It's not really a sphere necessarily, and we have all these weird things with geometry and, and these strange shapes. That actually becomes really, really strange. Um, in some of the courses I've taken, some of those shapes are really, really weird. Some people think it might look like, you know, like a saddle or something like that, and we talk about open and flat and closed universes. So really weird things come as a result of this.
So I personally don't necessarily like the Big Bang model just because it brings up a lot of weird things, but I accept it. And the reason is that the evidence really seems to point to this. And I think in science it's important to be honest and true to the evidence and say, well, the evidence points to this, so this is either correct or we need to come up with a model that explains the same evidence. So maybe let's mention some of this evidence here. So one of the things is that, because um, I mean, of course, this model, it sounds really wacky, it sounds totally crazy and made up, so there must be some evidence for it, and there really is. First of all, for redshift, I'll say everything or you know, just about, so everything, or almost at least, um, seems to be going away from us. So this is the sort of key thing here. And what is happening is this. Now the reason why we know this is we actually take a spectrum. So we take a spectrum of, for example, a galaxy. So we take the light from a galaxy, and we can see then that we end up with something like this. So let's say we take the spectrum of the light from a galaxy, and we might have something like something like this right here, and then maybe we have some of these transitions that we're expecting. Maybe this one, and this one, and let's say that one. What happens is, almost everything we see, so the spectrum of the galaxy, the light that we see from this galaxy, ends up being shifted. Everything gets sort of shifted to the right. So this right here sort of ends up being sort of shifted that way. So I could sort of point and say, well, everything sort of went that way. So all these lines sort of went, I'm drawing them red, but I could draw them any color I want. Basically, they all seem to move, whoops, all the spectral lines, when we take the spectrum of a galaxy, for example, or something that's you know sufficiently far away, all the lines that we see, they all get moved to the right. In other words, spectral lines are red shifted. And if things are red shifted, that implies moving away from us. This is the key sort of thing here. That if something if something is red shifted, it means it's moving away from us. So what this means is that almost everywhere you look, almost anything you look at, if you're looking at sufficiently far away objects like galaxies, for example, if you look at the spectrum of these things, so these lines that we expect to find, we find those lines, but they're all shifted a little bit over to the right. And in fact, some of them are shifted even more than expected. But so it seems like these spectral lines, uh, whoops, I should say spectral lines. I really should have added that there. So the spectral lines are red shifted. Maybe I should actually just erase this. So that's actually really, really important. Okay, so maybe I'll just rewrite it like this. Spectral lines. There we go. Sometimes that happens when you talk while you write. You sometimes don't write the right thing. But so the spectral lines are red shifted. That implies that everything is moving away from us. And if that's the case then, well, either we are particularly sort of stinky and everything is sort of, you know, if this is us at the center of the universe and everything else is going away from us, well, maybe we're particularly repulsive for some reason. But of course, uh, that's likely not the case. What's a more likely explanation is that the whole universe is expanding. So the main thing from here, the main sort of conclusion that we make from this is this. So I'm going to say conclusion, universe is expanding. So this is a very, very important thing. So almost anything you take a spectrum of, almost any object that's sufficiently far. Now keep in mind, we might take a spectrum of a close by star or something and it might be coming towards us, but that's because we're part of the same galaxy. But um, it turns out that if you look at other galaxies, almost all of them are red shifted, which means almost all of them move away from us, but there's a few exceptions. It turns out if you take the spectrum of the Andromeda galaxy, that's the closest big galaxy, at least, to our own, uh, those lines are actually blue shifted, which means that it's relative to us, at least it's coming towards us, or at least we're coming towards it. It's hard to define what's what, but at least we know that we're coming towards each other. In other words, the lines, that's why I said almost, uh, 
because there are a few exceptions of some galaxies that are coming towards us or we're coming towards them or something in the middle. And that's actually because we're part of what we call the local group. And in fact, that's one of the ways of telling what are the things that are close to us. Now you might wonder, how can that possibly be? If the universe is expanding, why should some things be coming close to each other? And that's because, well, in the universe we have gravity everywhere. That means everything with mass attracts every other thing with mass. And that means that if you're sufficiently close, then you know the, the attraction due to gravity is sufficient to sort of not really feel as much of the effects of the expansion of the universe. But other than those small exceptions, and there's very few of them, almost every other thing, every other thousands and millions of other galaxies we look at, they're all seeming to be red-shifted lines. And that tells us it's moving away from us, and that, ex in, that tells us that the universe is expanding. Now how can it be expanding? Why would that actually work? Why would these lines be sort of farther away from each other? Or why should these objects be farther away? A lot of people use this idea of a balloon that's expanding. So imagine these are here, the little dots that you sort of painted on the outside of a balloon. The space between every single dot is expanding. So this is sort of what's thought to be happening with the galaxies. So imagine these are all galaxies. The space between them is expanding. That's what we think is happening. 